morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of PLA with myself, Nick, and Bruno. We've got two questions today, and we'll do the first one with Nick and the second one with Bruno. Uh, the first one, Nick, comes from Facebook, and it is from Cooley. Cooley says that, is it true if you stayed in a house without anyone claiming it, you can obtain title, the title deed of that property? We lived in this house for 30 years, whereby my father's employer was the owner, after my father's employer passed away, uh, the house was being sold to different people while really living in it. Uh, no one has ever come forward to claim it. Uh, the current owner is uh, a company that doesn't exist. Uh, we have been paying, we've been paying for the municipality services, but we, but we weren't being able to maintain it. Can I get advice on this, Nick? Perfect. Okay, so... Uh, in terms of this question, I think where the question came from was really the um, the writer wanted to do uh, or, or ask really about acquisitive prescription. But uh, I'm going to avoid that particular topic because it seems to me in this circumstance, while the writer says um, th that, you know, no one owns it, it seems he highlights that there have been a number of different sales and it's changed hands in the circumstances between owners. Um and then that finally comes down to the question of well, there is um, there is a, a current owner of the property which happens to be a company, and the writer says that the company doesn't exist. Now I think that's I think that's a misinterpretation because it would be impossible for something that doesn't exist to actually have a property registered in its name. That's not possible. Um, so what I think the writer means there is that the company has in fact been deregistered at this point. Okay, so for for our listeners, remember, um, if you have a, a company and depending on what type of form of that company is, there are certain obligations placed on you uh, in order to keep that company registered. And in respect of PTYLTDs, you have to file returns every year. Um, and in the event that you don't do that, okay, or there are other reasons, you may find yourself in a situation where the company becomes deregistered. Okay, mm -hmm. so it seems to me that that is what's happened in this particular circumstance. We have a company that has, in fact, been deregistered. Um, and then the question comes, which is an interesting question. Well, if you've got a company that owns an immovable property, okay, and that company becomes deregistered, what exactly happens to that property? Okay, because the company, from a legal perspective, can't function. It, it doesn't exist, really. Uh, but the immovable property is still there, and, and ultimately that immovable property has got to be dealt with. And what our law provides is in circumstances where there is a company that's got an immovable property in it, uh, and the company becomes deregistered, that property becomes what we call res nullis. So it is a, it's an asset which is now forfeited to the state. Okay, so the, the immovable property itself is technically belongs to the states in the circumstances and they have dominion over that particular property. Okay, this, this is tricky from a, from a practical perspective in, in, uh, in South African law because obviously a, a, a house which is now owned by the state by virtue of the company being deregistered is basically a property which the state has no idea, no practical idea that it owns. Okay, and it's very mm -hmm. unlikely that the state is going to actually do anything with this particular property. And it's basically going to sit there for, for whatever period of time. The, the only time the state is going to really get involved is if there is some accumulation of rates, taxes, or or other utilities which are not being paid. They may then actually look into this into this matter, but from the question, we know that that's very unlikely in this particular circumstance because, in fact, they are maintaining the municipal services on the property. So the chances of the municipality actually stepping in and, and getting involved in this very, very slim. Um, I will mention from from uh, from one perspective, it's possible that you can, uh, in circumstances where there's a, a company that's been deregistered and it still has an immovable property in its name, it's actually a very easy process to get that company re-registered in the circumstances. You simply apply to CIPC, you demonstrate that it's got an immovable property, 
uh, in its name, and CIPC does do the re-registration of the company. So it's not impossible to get the company re-registered, but to what end and what happens after that is a far more complicated question because you can get the company re-registered, but that doesn't necessarily mean that anything is going to happen with that company. If it's already fallen short, maybe the, the company no longer has any active directors or, or whatever the case is, these things happen. Um, you know, you can get the company re-registered again, but unfortunately that doesn't drive the matter any further. So really, um, the, the point of this, of this question, you know, they've asked, is it possible to just get the, the property, you know, the title deed in my name because I've been living there for a prolonged period? Unfortunately, I don't think that's, that's going to be possible in this particular circumstance. It seems quite clear to me that there've been various owners and, and we would have to, dig deeper into what are the specific circumstances of, the, of that property to give a clear answer on that. But uh, at least from a perspective of, well, what what is the status of this property now? It, it would uh, be an asset in the hands of the state um, and, and deemed to res nullis. Mm. Absolutely.